So, we jump into the panel. And we're going to start with uh, the same uh, sequence as our introductions. Susan, if you are ready. I'm sure you are. Five years ago, we also had an anniversary in Education International. Then we were the same age as the Albert Shanker Institute is now. We were 25. Nice young age, <laughs> you know. You're, you're mature and uh, grown up. But I, in the, when we celebrated that, Susan, you and at the time the General Secretary of uh, Education International, Fred von Leuven, you published a book. On, the 20, on education and democracy, 25 lessons from the teaching profession. So we thought um, democracy when we were 25. Could you reflect on why did you choose the topic of democracy and education at that time five years ago? And how do you reflect on them still being relevant? Do you see any trends out there? Yes, I do have to turn this on. Thank you uh, very much, um, Helderson. Thank you to all of you who've so warmly welcomed us here today to this really important seminar. And, you know, somebody has very neatly put a copy of the book alongside me. That's very kind of them, isn't it? So I can hold it up just in case you haven't seen it. And uh, I recognise that uh, one of our writers uh, is actually here today with us, uh, Yelma Elmers, as well. Um, look, uh, I suppose to answer your question, uh, Heldis, I think that uh, the basic um, uh, lessons in democracy um, are relevant today as they were five years ago. So the reasons that we thought the book was important are really the same reasons that they, they remain so now, and perhaps even more so uh, in our role as teachers uh, and unionists. Um, a little closer for yeah, sure. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Um, the, uh, the lessons more than ever um, are, are urgent um, and if you, you know, have read the book you'll know that it is about uh, 25, uh, 25 lessons from the teaching profession about the importance of democracy and how te the teaching profession, teacher unionist teachers have played a role in uh, supporting, gaining democracy uh, and so on. Education can be daunting work under the best of circumstances today in too many parts of the world. And it also can be deadly. In 2022, the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack reported that more than 9,000 students, teachers and academics were harmed, injured or killed in, attaction, in attacks on education during armed conflict over the previous two years. This was more than 5,000 separate attacks on education facilities, students and educators, and a significant increase over the previous two years. No one believes there'll be fewer attacks in the next reporting period, especially when it comes to attacks on unions. In too many cases, autocrats and authoritarians have targeted our members, our member organisations, especially for defending democracy and the public good, and we'll hear some of that today. We know, uh, and we'll shortly hear more about the situation in Ukraine, but we cannot forget other desperate situations. In Myanmar, where democracy was fought for, won and lost, teachers have remained and are central to the democratic movement. Teacher union leaders continue to be hunted and remain in hiding, and many have fled the country. In Afghanistan, the government of religious extremists continues its attacks on women and girls, sharply restricting their ability to study and work. Equally urgent are the significant threats to democracy that don't include physical attacks regarding the book itself. One of the most striking aspects still is the ordinary nature of our subject matter. Many of the lessons seem axiomatic, so obvious as to be unnecessary for restatement stimulate critical thinking, oppose segregation, advocate equity, diversity, inclusion. These are just some of the fundamentals under constant attack, whether by governments, authoritarians, or displaying mobs. I would say a significant change from five years ago is in our own awareness as educators and unionists. We no longer have to urge all our members 
and our allies to face the facts or open their eyes to the realities. The consensus is growing that the democratic ideals we have very often taken for granted, those democratic ideals and institutions designed to support them, are endangered. As Timothy Snyder says in the foreword to the book, democracy needs to be seen in its possibilities, the things we strive for, none of it is automatic. If we want democracy, we have to demand it. And we have to be able to educate children who will make it and remake it. If we're going to talk about trends, Hilda, so I want to look back to the 2015 UN Sustainable Goals that declared free, high quality, inclusive, equitable and accessible education to all. A global goal and essential for democracy. In 2020, the UN Secretary General Guterres looked at COVID's disrupt disruption of education and called it a generational opportunity to reimagine education, to take a leap forward towards to take a leap towards forward-looking systems that deliver quality education for all. Then last September, the UN Secretariat announced formation of a high-level panel on teachers and the teaching profession. The Commission will examine the role of teachers and the supports we need to do our work, including addressing the global teacher shortage, elevating the teacher professionalism and the importance of funding public education systems. Just like democracy, public education is not inevitable. It needs to be fought for, defended, extended and adapted to new challenges. Today, around the world, education financing is in crisis. Education systems in many countries have fewer resources than at any time in history. And that's why our member organisations through Education International launched the global campaign, Go Public, Fund Education, to hold governments accountable to recognise education and teachers and uh, critical investments, indi uh, critical investments uh, indicated real numbers in national budgets for public education by the share of domestic spending and by tax justice to ensure that all companies pay their fair share of tax and that tax loopholes are closed. The fact that teachers can mobilise and lead a global campaign for quality public education is a human right and public good and uh, as a human right and public good is a testament to El Shanker and to Mary Hatwood Futrell, who joins us here today. Individually, my predecessors were the leaders that moved their organisations into international leadership. Mary led her members to doors of the South African Embassy in Washington in the early days of the fight against apartheid. In places like Chile and Poland, um, El mobilised his own memberships against tyranny and for democracy. Together, they gave us a federation that still has much work to do in the fight for democracy. But thanks to them and their examples, we have the tools and we have the spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much.